High schools in America didn't always look like this. A sea of children filing into what are often overcrowded classrooms with limited resources and teachers spread so thin they don't have time to personally know their students. There was a time over 200 years ago prior to public education when the responsibility for secondary education belonged solely to community members, when classes were small and when lessons were taught with a personal touch, ensuring every child got the most out of their education. There was no such thing as public education um, uh, 200 years ago. Um, so members of local communities took it upon themselves to uh, take the responsibility of providing education, in this case secondary education, for the students in their community. And it took part as community leaders came together, as church leaders came together, um, business leaders came together and said, we're going to provide education for our local students. And that started right here in these communities. Called Town Academies, they once stood 122 strong in their home state of Maine and were locally governed and funded through direct tuition payments from families and local philanthropy. But as taxpayer support for public schools grew at the end of the 19th century, many of these independent schools were absorbed by the emerging public school system. Many communities, however, chose not to build public high schools. In Maine, over 55 communities have continued the historic practice of using the private town academy as their high school of choice. Today, nine of these private town academies remain and continue to operate in the communities they have historically served. When public education came into existence at the end of the 19th century, uh, the state decided to uh, help parents, encourage parents to send their students um, to these town academies and therefore they provided some uh, tuition support for town academies known as the maximal allowable tuition rate which is the average cost of secondary education from the previous year. And so for every student who attends the academy, these communities pay the tuition bill, as it were, for these students to attend the academies. Data from the National Center for Educational Statistics show that Maine's town academies cost 19% less per pupil in tax-supported revenue than Maine's public schools. Through local control, philanthropic support of its alumni, and an entrepreneurial spirit, town academies continue to educate local day students, as well as a growing number of private payday and boarding students, boasting a diverse student body while offering a competitive curriculum. One of the best surprises were when I came here is how welcoming the people are. I didn't expect that at all. I came um, to try something new, so I tried fo American football, and I was so surprised how welcoming everyone was. When I came here, they talked to me, and in lunch, they told me to sit beside them from the very first day and um, invited me over. When Mr. and Mrs. Keene were confronted with the choice of where to settle and raise their family, they chose the town of Dover Foxcroft, Maine where the 200-year-old academy education model is still used today. I think it's important to keep this model alive because um, it's a little bit different. It's not, it's not strictly a boarding school and it's not strictly a small town school. It's private, yet it's public because um, this is where all the kids from Dover Foxcroft, um, Monson, Sebec, and Charleston come to school as well as Harmony. I always saw the differences between the public school and the town academies and I knew that the town academy offered a better um, focus on academics and also more options to study different types of things, take more AP classes and even the sports here seemed to be um, better than other public schools so I definitely knew that the town academy was a better option for me. As our public school system continues to feel the strain, some parents are taking their child's education in a different direction, towards a teaching model that has stood the test of time while keeping up with our ever-changing world. Established in 1823, Foxcroft Academy is one of only 13 independent town academies left in New England. Proudly teaching day and boarding school students, Foxcroft Academy provides a challenging and comprehensive college preparatory and technical education program in an environment that promotes development of character, preparing students for responsible citizenship. The student body is diverse, bringing our global community closer together. What I appreciate the most will probably be that um, I got to 
learn about so many cultures because Fast Art Academy has so many students from so many different countries. So I didn't know much about Korea before I came. I didn't know that much about Spain or France. And when I came here, I made friends with people from all over the world, and it gives you a whole different view. Students at Foxcroft Academy are always encouraged to seek out a new adventure, whether it be in the classroom, on the field, or in the community, helping to shape these teens into dynamic adults. Well, I try to push myself uh, in the social life here and try to integrate uh, the community of Foxcroft, try to make some friends with the day students. Uh, just, I think just by the fact that I was involved in some club and uh, or sports team like soccer or tennis or football, uh, you get to know some of the kids and you know, you're already far away from, uh, from your family so the, the, the friendship with, uh, with your friend gets stronger and you kind of you get it at the point where uh, your friendship gets a substitute of a second family, so it was really nice. With a faculty-student ratio of 1 to 13, the entire staff at Foxcroft Academy is committed to giving students support inside and outside of the classroom, something not typically found in most high schools. One of the accountability factors is we have to perform better. If we don't perform better, then towns can elect to send their students anywhere else, to public schools or to anywhere else they choose. So every year we have to earn the right to educate the students of these communities. And our teachers understand that. And so our teachers perform at a higher level knowing that there is a great deal of accountability directly to the parents and the communities to which we serve. The staff here at Foxcroft Academy is wonderful. Um, I'd say that's one of the best parts about going here. You can always go in early or stay later and um, they're willing to work with you to help you understand um, the material. Like in China, it's a simply memorization stuff. The teacher will never tell you how is the formula come from. Like I asked questions for the teacher, I said, oh, hey teachers, where is this come from? He said, oh, don't ask why, just remember. But I learned it here through the physics lab, and I know each formula, how they come from, and uh, then I can use it more clearly. In other schools where I come from, it's, they give you the classes you have to take all year until you graduate. But here you choose, you can choose the difficulty of your classes, and um, if you choose to challenge yourself, I think it prepares you for college. Graduates of Foxcroft Academy have attended some of the most prestigious universities, and the list continues to grow. Foxcroft Academy, a place where excellence has many faces. To inquire about enrollment opportunities, visit us at foxcroftacademy.org or call the number on your screen.